what's up everybody and thanks for tuning in to today's episode of undercover vikings now as you can see from the title we're talking about gift giving in the lofbrook family now i know that the vikings do not celebrate christmas but that is not the point i want to talk about the specific gifts that his kids inherited from the man himself king ragnar lofbrook um, through birth so it's not actual physical gifts but more so heredity gifts hereditary hereditary gifts <laughs> anyway so let's start off with his oldest son Bjorn now it's it's completely apparent to everybody that Bjorn obviously inherited the gift of travel he is the son that wants to travel that wants to see the world that wants to you know um, interact with new people discover new lands and new places that is who we that is what was given to Bjorn um, he does he, they're all still Vikings um, in their own way, but his true passion is the traveling side of uh, Ragnar, which is what he inherited. Um, and then moving on to Ube, who is the second oldest. Now, I am saying this solely based on episode one and two of season five. So if you haven't seen that yet, then you might not want to listen to this part um, because it will give away some stuff, um, but not necessarily anything. But with Ube, he really inherited that farm boy spirit, which is who Ragnar was before he became Earl, before he became King. He was a farmer. He had his own farmlands, his own little group of people that were farming with him, where he lived with Lagatha, um, and that was who he was. He was a farm boy at heart, and even in the end, you can see uh, when Ragnar was going through so much he was still like remembering the good old days of when he used to be on his farm and it's really cool because in real life he is a farm boy Travis <laughs> but um, Ube definitely inherited that farm boy spirit and you can see that because um, something that happened in season one in season five episode one was when they were raiding York um, they were they rush into the little church and uh, they're killing like all these people and you could see the look on Ube's face when he just sees everyone dying like all these innocent people dying and you could see like it, it's like why are we doing this that's a question that you could see in his mind I think he has no problem with killing soldiers but when it comes to killing like ordinary citizens that really have not that you have nothing against that's what really gets to Ube, and that is definitely his father's spirit. Now, when he was looking at the two nuns, or whatever they were, and the one girl got cut, slit her wrist, I think she slit it herself, and she falls into Ragnar's arms, that reminded me, because like him looking at her, reminded me of in season one, when they were raiding the second city in Northumbria, and there was a little boy, and you remember he was like sitting, kneeling on the floor somewhere, and Ragnar saw him, and he takes a sheet and he covers the little boy so his men wouldn't see the little boy and wouldn't kill him. That's That just picture came into my mind when I saw Ube looking at this woman and this woman dying in his arms. Um, and then, of course, if you're in any of the Vikings groups, they show like these clips that were deleted in the U.S. version of, C of season five, episode one. So in the U.S. version, they show them questioning the boys about when the next holy day is, and then they tell the boy, the boys tell them, and then the boys um, they don't show anything else after that. Um, but in a apparent deleted scene, the boys are burned alive as a sacrifice. So. In that scene, in that deleted scene, you see Ube like walking away, like he can't take it, and so he's just leaving because he doesn't want to watch that. That is truly Ragnar's spirit, because Ragnar was never one to kill a bunch of people for no reason. He remember that episode when they go into the church, and he was like, "Listen, if you cooperate, nobody will die." But of course, like in the end, the guy didn't, the priest didn't really cooperate like he wanted. But Ragnar. It was never the kind to just want to kill random citizens. He has no problem with killing soldiers, but to kill random citizens was not something that Ragnar would do, which is the same like Ube. It just seems like Ube doesn't have the desire to do that. He wants to see his people prosper and grow, but killing people for no reason is not something that he sees is beneficial to them. And so that's what he inherited from his father, 
Uba is definitely the farm boy, the peaceful at heart kind of person. And next we're gonna talk about Fitzer because he's the next oldest. Now Fitzer gets a little odd, but if you remember, Ragnar has always had that calm, cool, collective spirit where like when it was time to be wise, he was wise. When it was time to rage, he raved. But then when it was time to chill, Ragnar was definitely one who could chill, relax, be calm, cool. No crave for power, no crave for, um, he didn't crave the earldom. He just ended up falling in his lap. He didn't crave to be king, but because of the king's old king's stupid, uh, decisions he ends up becoming king um, and that's kind of like who Fitzer is and I feel like power will just fall into Fitzer can because he's not hunting for it he's not looking for it he just wants to stay in leadership with his brothers he loves his brothers wants to hang out with them and you know he still has that Viking thing about him where he'll kill to kill he'll raid to raid he'll rape to rape but at the end of the day, he's really just this calm, cool, collected guy that really isn't hunting for power. And that's who Fitzuk is. And I think that helps him in the long run because he's less of a threat versus Ube and Ivar going head to head or Ube or Ivar and Bjorn or anything. He's really cool. He's like, I'm not in it for the power. I'm just in it for the fun. I'm a Viking. Um, and so finally, that brings me to Ivar. Now, of course, Ivar has that hungry for killing spirit, but not necessarily like his father. He's way beyond what his father would ever do. Because um, he would, you know, Ragnar did kill priests in his time. Ragnar did kill a lot of people in his time. He did a lot of wars, but you know, Ivar takes it like one step further, which is just unnecessary, which is something that Ragnar never did. He never really took it one step further to be unnecessary. He did what he needed to do and that was it. So in the long run, long story short, uh, Ivar really inherited from Ragnar that wise, um, that wise thinking, especially in season five, episode one, when they were talking about where they were gonna settle their people on English soil. And Ube wanted to settle where the king had given them, which he didn't really give them if you watch the episode. Um, and I didn't even think about that until I watched it. Um, but he wanted to just settle where King Egbert signed the paper for them to be. But in reality, what Ivar said, which was very wise, was listen, look what he gave us. He gave us the middle of all these territories. If we settle here, we are going to be, you know, bombarded. We'll be attacked on all sides. We'll have enemies on all sides. But if we go here, we'll be close to the water, which is what we know, and we'll have a fortress, which is even better for us. So I think that Arvai definitely got that wise thinking, cunning spirit. He just needs to learn how to take more, learn more, take more correction. He also knows how to speak. Um, he knows how to speak uh, the English language. And so he's really, he really gets that, that wisdom, but he still needs a lot of training. And I think that um, he can learn a lot. And, it, and, you, and you can see that, especially when Ube is telling him like, oh, you're, remember when dad said that we have to wait to see when the holy day is? Like when you can take correction, you can take, uh, thing you're you gonna become such a better leader and I think that's what he needs but he did definitely inherited a lot of his father's wisdom and which hopefully will take them far in the long run so that is what uh, each child has inherited from Ragnar tell me if you agree with what I've said or if you think that some things are mismatched cross or there's some things that I missed in their inheritance um, in their and what Ragnar has given them. If you think I've missed something or I didn't quite get something right, let me know in the comments. Um, thank you guys for joining me on my drive. And um, I love to talk to you guys. Later.